It's like preparing its attack, going around me. It's like a shark, bro. It's trying to eat me. Welcome back to another life-changing Roblox tutorial, okay? I know nobody asked for a heat-seeking pizza, but like nobody asked for the light bulb. I mean, no, some people probably did ask for the light bulb, but look, it was made anyway, okay? So I'm going to do the same with the pizza, all right? So the very first thing that I'm thinking we do is just look up pizza on the toolbox, okay? Because I'm, look, I'm not a smart person, okay? I don't know how to model, I'll be honest, but these people know how to model. So, I mean, we got a slice of pizza in the toolbox. It's insanely tiny, but I mean, there's nothing stopping me from just like, you know, <laughs> upsizing it a little bit. Okay, so we have the pizza. Now let's actually discuss what do we want this pizza to do? Because the title is going to say heat seeking pizza, okay? Or not, because I, ch I change my titles every like three seconds, as you all know. But the idea of the heat seeking pizza, okay, is that I want it to point towards the nearest player, okay? So it's going to find the nearest player, it's going to point towards them, okay? And then it's just going to move towards the player, right? And once it touches the player, the player is going to like explode or something. But before doing that, we need to make a huge adjustment, okay? And that's to add fire to the pizza. Uh, okay, I mean, this isn't going to do anything, but like, like you got to admit, this looks a lot more like a heat-seeking pizza than it did before. Okay, so now that the boring part is out of the way, let's do the fun part where we just write words and then the computer takes those words and then does something with them. Now, look, what I want this pizza to do, okay, uh, is that I wanted to just seek out the nearest player, okay? And then I wanted to, you know, point towards them and then start moving towards them. But here's the thing, to actually move the pizza, because it's not a character, right? I can't just say, okay, move to and it's not going to work, right? So I have to consistently update its position to basically just go towards and point towards the nearest player. And so if we want to update the pizza continuously, there are multiple ways of doing this. Like you could use game dot run service, right? You could do that. What I'll do is I'll just use a while loop. Okay. So while task dot wait, basically what this is going to do is it's going to wait a task dot wait, which I could be wrong, but like, I'm pretty sure that this is the smallest amount of time you can wait in Roblox, right? So basically this is the fastest way to update. Maybe run service is a bit faster, but I don't know. I'll just, I'll just stick to a while loop. And so right now, what we need to do is we need to find the closest player. So what I'll do is I'll do a four I comma a v loop okay in game uh, dot players gets players okay what we're doing here is we're gonna go through every single player so like i named them i and v for index and value but you can name these whatever you want so i could say player instead of v right which i'll actually keep because i like that change but that's just the player right we want to actually get the player's physical character so it's either going to get the character or wait for the character although now that i'm thinking about it sometimes a player just might not have a character right i don't know how your game operates but some players just might not have a character maybe maybe they're dead right because the issue is is like if we make it wait then it's gonna wait like it's not gonna move on to the next player it's not gonna say like okay this guy doesn't have a character okay let me target another player so i think i'll actually remove this line i think actually what i will do instead is i'll just say if not player dot character then continue end Meaning, if the player doesn't have a character, we're just going to skip that player and continue to the next player. And so now we need to find the distance between the character and the pizza, okay? And the very simple way to do this is, you know, local distance. I'll just make a variable for it. We're going to say script.parent, so script.parent being the pizza, dot position, we're going to get the pizza's position, and then we're going to subtract the pizza's position by the player.character position. And the way we do that is we just say player.character, wait for child, humanoid root part, which is a part that's in, it's in the middle of every character. It's like the main part of the character, the root part. Part, if, if you will. And then, right, so uh, pizza's position minus character's position, we'll put this in brackets, like so, and then we'll say dot magnitude, okay? Mag, magnet. I can't. And so this will basically just return us a number, which is going to be the distance between the pizza and the player. And just to make sure that this works, we can actually print this out. So we can print out this distance, right? And yeah, there we go. So the distance right now is 26 point something. If I move closer to it, then the distance begins. Yeah, there we go. If I move further away, then the distance increases. Okay, so that works. But now it's like, how do we determine what player is the closest? Now, there actually are many ways of doing this. Like one that I just thought of is we could technically take all of the distances of the players and then put them in like a table, right? And then like we can ask the table to give us the smallest value, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, too long. So what I will do instead is I'll make a variable called max distance at the very top. Max distance is equal to, let's say 1000. And basically what we're going to do here is you know we're gonna see the distance right we're gonna get the distance of the player and what we'll do is we're gonna say 
if distance is less than max distance, okay, so if the distance between the pizza and this player is less than the max distance, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the max distance to be equal to distance, okay? Which I know like sounds a bit confusing, but in short, right, if the max distance is 1000, right, and then like we, you know, loop through a player and then there's a player that's 900 studs away from the pizza, right? Well, now the new max distance will be 900. And then when it's gonna loop through all the other players, now it's gonna check if their distance is less than 900. And if it is, well, that's gonna say, okay, so that is the new nearest player. And now it's gonna update this max distance to the distance of the new nearest player. And so it's gonna keep on doing that until it finds the player with the least distance. And to actually keep track of that player, what we could do is we could just say local target, and we, we'll just make it equal to nothing, so nil, because we don't know what the target is yet, right? But then, you know, if the target's distance is less than max distance, then we're gonna set max distance, and we're gonna say target is equal to, now we could set it to be equal to the player, or we could set it to the humanoid root part, actually, which I think I'll actually do that. So I'll set it, I'll set target to be the player's uh, humanoid root part. And the last thing to do to wrap this up is I'll just say if target is equal to nil, then continue end. So if there aren't any players within the 1000, you know, radius, then target will be equal to nil, meaning, you know, the pizza can't actually chase anything. So we're just going to continue, which means that we're going to restart the loop over again. Now to actually see if this works, what I want to do is I want to get the pizza to move towards the nearest player, which in this case, it's just going to be me because I'm the only player, right? So I'm going to try and get the pizza to actually look at me first. So I'll say script.parent, you know, for the pizza dot C frame, okay, is equal to C frame dot new. It's going to ask for the position, which um, for now, we're not going to change the position. We'll just say script.parent.position. So it's current position. And then it needs a position to look at, right? So as you can see, look at. And in this case, it's just going to be us. It's going to be the humanoid root part, which remember target is the humanoid root part. So basically just target uh, dot position so if i play this game right now okay i mean it's what is the orientation uh oh i see okay so this is a bit annoying but how parts in roblox work is that they have a front face as always right but the issue is this pizza model its front face is here and not here. And there's no way to change this, by the way, right? So what we actually have to do is we need to, when we actually adjust the, you know, the rotation of the pizza, we have to then adjust it again so that it gets rotated so that it actually faces the correct way. And so let's see, if we want the pizza to turn over here, that's 90 degrees, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah, okay, 90 degrees. So the way we actually rotate a pizza, 90 degrees, is we'll, you know, we'll get the C-frame and then I need to times the C-frame by C-frame dot angles. So it's gonna be time equals c frame dot angles okay now c frame dot angles it's a bit confusing but in short it's effectively the angle of the c frame right so c frame is a mix of position and orientation and c frame dot angles basically handles the the orientation part so if we want to actually rotate it 90 degrees let's say zero we need to say math dot rad for radians right negative 90 positive 90 i'm not let's let's try negative 90 okay zero okay and you might be asking oh but how did you get this number right there's like what's the logic behind it honestly the logic is just that i think this will work okay i'm not sure if negative 90 i'm not sure if negative 90 is supposed to be for the first number or for the last number i just put it in the middle because it looks right for me and the reason you're doing math radians is because that's how c from that angles work right angles works using radians blah 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 it does some complex math calculations and then it ends up working in the end yes beautiful Look at that. Awesome. Yeah. And so all we need to do right now is just make it actually go towards me. And because it's actually now facing me, that should be a little easier to do. So I'll do the same thing. Script.parent, C-frame, blah, blah, blah. But this time I want to make it actually move forward. So the way you make a part move forward, or like I said, to the side or whatever, is you multiply the C-frame, right? So you'll say C-frame times equals another C-frame dot new. And here, this is where you just experiment with the numbers, right? So I think it's going to be like 0, 0, 0, 0.01. Let's see. Okay, so right now it's it's like moving in a circle. Why is it doing that? What if I what if I set this to be equal to one? That's actually really cool, but it's not actually moving forward, which is a small issue. Okay, so I'll, I'll keep this one because I, I like this. Um, let's try 0.1 on this angle. Oh no, it's moving away from me. It's moving down. That's 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 not good. Hold on. <laughs> um, let's let's try this. Let's try this. That's actually insanely cool. It's like preparing its attack. Okay, clearly that wasn't it though. So I think it's just like a negative 0.5, let's, let's, let's say. 
Yep, there we go. Okay, yeah. So now it's going after me. Okay, that makes more sense. To actually, you know, make it a little fairer for me, I'll just move the pizza over here. Okay. Oh, that is terrifying. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Boom. And yeah, so we've just successfully created a heat seeking. I mean, it's not done yet. Okay. We have, we still have two more things to do, but that's pretty cool. So the two more things we need to do, I'm thinking is uh, the first thing, right, is going to be, we need to check if the player is dead or not. Okay. So what we're going to do is real quick. I'll just say if um, player.character wait for child humanoid, right, dot health is less than one. So if the health is less than one, meaning zero, meaning he's dead, uh, continue end. Right, so if the player doesn't have a character, we'll, we'll you know, skip. Or if the player's uh, health is zero, then we'll also skip. So this just makes sure that the moment it kills a player, it doesn't linger on the player. It actually just immediately moves on to the next player. And to actually ensure that, you know, it kills whatever it touches, we'll say script.parent.touch, connect function. Basically, whenever the pizza actually touches something, it's going to give us the other parts that it touches, okay? Uh, basically, yeah, if the other part belongs to a player, which we can say if other parts.parent, find first child humanoid. So if the part's parent has a humanoid, then it's a player, okay? So then we can just say um, instance.new um, explosion. I'm going to parent it to the other parts, dot parent, uh, wait for child, humanoid root part. And then I'll just set the explosions uh, position equal to the other parts dot position. And so now if I play right now, it's surrounding me surrounding me and boom and i actually just modify these numbers a little bit okay so instead of one i'll do 0 0.5 and then instead of 0 0.5 on here i'll do 0 0.2 or something and look at that it's chasing me okay it's getting there and it's going around me it's like a shark bro it's trying to eat me and then okay there we go so you know i hope that your life has been <laughs> significantly altered with this amazing invention i hope that the heat taking roblox pizza has given you purpose and meaning in life yeah i don't even know what to say anymore bro look at this my head is spinning i'm gonna publish this as an actual like playable game it's gonna have microtransactions in it obviously as every good roblox game does if you found this video like actually helpful as like a legit scripting tutorial then i uh like in the description you can check right now i have a link which i only have one product that i sell it's like a course right and like if you use the code freaky blocks it gives you like 50 percent off i think for like like the code is like expiring in two days so you know if if that's something you're interested in you have two days to redeem the code and yeah so you know let's say goodbye to our pizza um mwah, right on the tip uh we are back to basics thank you for watching